All right, guys, welcome back to another episode. Today we have Dax on, man. How are you doing? We've never met before. This is the first time we're actually meeting. Man, it's your boy Dax, and we're back at it like a bad habit. If you want something better, go grab it in today, baby. We What's going on? Big play. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, man. sir. Yes, sir. That's like a fucking, that's like a breakfast club type intro. Yeah. Like it's my. That, it's man. an affirmation. Yeah. Is that is that always your thing? Yeah, it's an affirmation I say every day. Really? When you wake yeah. up in the morning? Look when I wake up, look in the mirror. That's actually, that's a good call because so I've heard like, so I, I watched like the Marine podcast and like mm. this guy's like, if you make your bed every day, your life is going to be better. But see, it's mm. the same thing. Positive affirmations. Mm. So I don't believe in the making the bed thing. Neither do you I. You like it messy? You keep it messy all day? I'm everything around me, like in my crib, or where I, you know, stay, is uh, is pretty pretty messy. But I mean, I clean it up every now and then. Yeah. Okay. If you if you make your bed in a messy room, it's no longer messy. Mm. Trust me. Wow. Trust me. I don't know about like, that. I, I believe in that. If you like make your bed, like it starts the day off right. You know, it's like a routine. It's the first thing you do. And when you go to you bed, it's nice to have like a well made exactly. bed to get into. You know wow. what I'm saying? I yeah. feel like I work better better in like a environment that's like a little bit messy. chaos, I mean, chaotic. Yeah, yeah. 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 I need okay. like chaos. I feel that. Yeah. Yeah. I get what you mean. Uh, all right. So we. I want to talk about this first. We were just talking about it before the episode. The Kanye interview came out. Mm. Uh, what did you think about that? I'm like 30 minutes in. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think it's always interesting to uh, to watch. You know, I feel like the common consensus is that like Kanye is like somewhat crazy, but then you also got to think like, how does one become so successful? Right. If they're so, you know, crazy. He's a, he's obviously a, a genius. So I think it's always interesting to listen to hear, hear him speak and what he has to say. So I'm watching it. That shit's lit. Yeah. I'm I'm like 30 minutes in. I'm just like glued to it. So you think you think yeah, it's weird. He's fucking insane yeah. but he's also like a genius too so it's yeah. like this fine line i don't know how much he's a normal person like behind the scenes when you actually get to know him i bet he's pretty normal like, more he's exactly yeah I, I bet you, i bet he's pretty normal uh, what do you think of what he said about big sean what do you say he said well chris how, i'm only 30 minutes did in, you so watch oh. something like that so yeah I don't even... spoilers you don't mind no, just okay uh, he said uh big sean was the worst decision signing big sean was the worst decision he ever made and he brought out a tombstone and said, when I die, it's going to be written here. The reason I am dead is because I signed Big Sean. Wow. wow. I mean, my first immediate thought is that Big Sean's currently putting out like new music. So that's great for Big Sean. Yeah. yeah. Brought a lot of attention to his awesome. music. Maybe that was a ploy by Kanye to bring attention to him. So my, so my thing is Big Sean was a huge part of my teens. You know what I mean? Like he was one of the most, like that, I can't remember the album he dropped. But it had like Beware on it. It had um, I Don't Fuck With You. Like, you know, all those songs. Like, yeah. that was a, that was heavily streamed. Yeah. I don't see that being a bad business decision. No, he. but the reason why he said that was because of like political reasons where like when he was running for president, uh, Big Sean and John Legend were siding with Democrats and going against him. Mm. And he's claimed that he changed Big Sean's life. Mm. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. I don't got, I don't usually, I don't have opinions on other men's business, but I mean, shit. They're both great. I mean, Big Sean's got bars, man. Big Sean's got bars. Like, He's I heard his news. I actually commented on one of his YouTube videos the other day because I was just like, yo, I can't not listen to this. Someone who appreciates bars and not comment. Yeah. This shit was hard. Well, we saw so. him like two nights ago. Like, we were, because oh, we wow. were like, this, like Call of Duty uh, for like the new Vanguard. And Big Sean just like walks out. And we're like, dude, fucking Big Sean. This is epic. That's and like, lit. It was like little little John was there, little Tekka, like all these guys. It was it was insane. Yeah, they were playing That's COD lit. against each other as wow. like for the new COD game. Yeah. That's lit. Yeah, the Migos hella cool though. I I chill with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've done something interesting though. Like you started off on YouTube making all these like um, more like what would you call it? like YouTube rap a little bit, but then you've done this thing where you've le but you've left that and then gone mainstream, which is what all these different rappers want to do. I think someone else has done it. Has been um, how am I blanking on his name? Uh, from um, from the fight. Chris, who's the guy? He fought um from the fight. Who from the Bryce Hall fight? That's a rap. Oh, uh, DDG. 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 Okay. He kind of okay. did that too. He started off on the internet and then he went mainstream. And I think you're doing the same thing. Okay. What's that process been like? Do you think that's accurate? Yeah. Um, I wouldn't consider myself mainstream. You're pretty mainstream. I mean, you have like 2.5 million monthly listeners. So you mean by mainstream like success, or you mean like just no? I just mean by just based on like fan like fan interaction. not being like, just like an internet like artist, right? And going yeah. bigger than that. Yeah, I mean like the tours and everything are dope. Um, I wouldn't say I was ever a YouTuber. I started off doing poetry in Wichita, Kansas. Okay. And that you know eventually turned into music, but I've never ever made like YouTube videos or anything like that. Um, I think people associate me with that because I've had interactions with certain. 
You're right. YouTubers. Mm. KSI. So I, that's a correct. So one of the biggest people, ones. You know, want to put me in that category, but I, you know, I don't think I've never. I mean, at the end of the day, people are going to give you labels. I think humanity, they love labels. Everyone needs to feel and be a part of something. So they're going to label you something. But I don't think Dax can be put in a category of anything, even mainstream. Like, what is that? You know, I don't. So. What 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 would you want to be put in? Like, what's like? Man, I'm like, just I'm just an artist, man. I mean, shit, I'm making shit like Dear God, Book of Revelations, these crazy songs that are like, you know, some of the most successful independent songs ever. So it's like that's even completely out of the spectrum of like. Sh- you know, shit. Yeah. that's normal. So, so you like don't want to be labeled. You just want to be like, you just want to be labeled like. Yeah, man. Yourself. If anything, label me a poet because that's what I started with, right. and that was my main goal. And I never wanted to make music, but you know, yeah, just an artist who's. How'd you go from poetry to music, man? So I started off with poetry. I wrote my first poem as a junior once I transferred from Division One basketball to Division Two, and I was overnight janitor. Everyone knows that. <laughs> And I started writing poetry, and then eventually it was just like there wasn't much replay value on it. And everyone was telling me, yo, you're rhyming these words anyways. You might as well mm. just make music. Yeah, because rapping is kind of, it's pretty much like a fat, it's just fast poems, right? So like, yeah. Because I, I, I was I doing of, spoken word. Exactly. When I think of rapping, you're like in comparing it to poetry, it's, it's different stands of different rhymes on each, different um different sentences and the same thing with rapping when you look at the lyrics when it's being played it's just yeah you know, i would say with some rappers though some rappers it's not it's not poetry yeah, yeah. right but like yeah some rappers like some rappers like my are, shit you can literally read it like a book like yeah. it, like if you look at a lot of my songs a lot of them don't even like might not even have hooks or whatever but you can literally like read it as a text you know because it's poetry yeah so. I think I I think that that's uh like there's like intellectual rap which is like you yeah know, like you have to like like really like think about things like when people yeah. tell I don't know there's rappers that don't do intellectual rap and then they'll tell stories in some songs mm. and uh, like even like I don't know speaker knockers have you you listen to speaker knockers I do not so speaker knockers like he's he he died but um he has a few songs where he's he got tells, a couple hits right but I, like, oh, I dude, know he tells yeah, story like okay. he has like it's called crazy story and it's mm. literally like I think it's five five parts long wow. And it's insane the the story that he tells the entire time. Like I don't fuck with speaker knockers that heavy, but those songs insane. Yeah, because he figures out how to rap and tell an entire story over like you know yeah. fifteen minutes. Of. Yeah, the critical thinking involved in that's insane, and right. to link it through five different pieces, it's wild. That's a talented motherfucker. Mm-hmm. Right yeah, there. it's no, it's it, it's really intense. It shows the uh, the lyricism and like the ability that he has to tell a story. Yeah, it's really cool. Who do you think's doing it right? Who do you think can do that really well right now? That's like. Very relevant in the in the music space. Can do tell like a story. Yeah, man, I, I'm not even gonna lie to you. I really don't. Um, you don't think anyone? No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying like I J. haven't Cole's paid really attention good. enough to someone like a five part story. I mean, obviously the like J Cole, Kendrick, you know those guys. Honestly, Drake's an amazing lyricist as well. There's a lot of great lyricists out there. I think any of like six really really successful of the top guys, they're all good at writing. Mm-hmm. You know. So does Drake? Does Drake actually write? I don't know Drake, so I. I I mean, because because I, because <laughs> like, so like so Jake. But I, I assume he did, like I, I, of course he has to. There's yeah. no uh, there's absolutely no way one can. Yeah, he, he and do you consider does. it writing if somebody if, if the artist is helping a writer? Say that. What do you mean? Like so so say you have a writer yeah. and the artist is sitting in with the writer, having them formulate you know a, a song. Okay. Do you consider that writing or do you consider that um, a ghostwriter? I don't. For me. I'm only going to speak on myself because I know myself fully, wholeheartedly. I don't personally ever have anyone in the studio with me except for the engineer. Okay. Mm-hmm. And it's just you. Because it's just me. Because I've heard that, so Drake has a, or people call Drake out for having ghostwriters. I think that was a, mi- I think that was, I think you that think whole was thing a was a misconception though. Honestly, like, like I'm from Canada, you know, I, I, only, I didn't start making music till 22. Drake's been like my favorite, favorite artist in seventh grade. Mm-hmm. And like, I think, I think that man. Like he's writing for a bunch of other people, right? Mm. You know, there's probably like maybe things get like thrown around, where like oh, but like I said, I don't know the story, so I can't. Eat. Like I'm not about to like fucking talk about something I don't know. Because to me, it seems like he writes for himself. Hell yeah, that's sure. what I think. But and and like I don't know, it was on that Meek Mill diss track. Um, I think there's a fine line between like what people consider a ghostwriter and just like somebody writing in a group. Because like the, like you can't go so far as say people are writing for me when I'm living the life that I'm talking about. Yes. You know? Cause like everything comes out of his point of view. So I really don't think he goes right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think it comes down to like, cause I think Drake, I've, I've always talked with Drake. Like, I think that it's interesting. Like all those guys that have like actual like lyricism in their, in their rap, 
Like, I think it's hella cool. Yeah. Because it, it's honestly, it, like Chris said, it's kind of like poetry. It's like mm-hmm. poetry on a beat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. How do you, uh, what's the story be- behind you going from Canada to Wichita, Kansas? How did that, oh, what's man. the entire so story like le- leading up to what's thing? happening now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we want to hear okay. all of it. Okay. First, first podcast. Okay. Um, so, what happened? When I was 11, year old, 11 years old, I found the law of attraction. Okay. What's that? The law of attraction is anything that you think about constantly starts to manifest within your life. So I'm 11 years old. I'm on YouTube. Um, and it was called The Secret. And at this point in my life, I was just living normally, mm-hmm. you know, like a normal person. Not really. I'm, mind you, I'm 11. Mm-hmm. So you know, when yeah, I was fucking yeah, yeah. Hit, about to hit puberty and shit, you know, you just find your dick. Like you're just, you're about there. You know what I mean? Fire so, off f- empty blanks. Yeah. You're yeah. just like, you're finding it out. So I find the secret law of attraction. And I started to realize right then and there that I was in total control of my life. Okay. And I was like, okay, I no, wanna, no longer want to live average. How'd you find it? It's on YouTube. It just found me, essentially. The suggestion box brought you to the law of attraction. Yeah. Okay. The se- it was I called The mean. Secret. Boom. So then I found uh, this video game. Up to, up to this point, I didn't even play video games. One, one Sunday, I'm like, yo, I want uh, NBA Live 2005, the one with Carmelo Anthony on the cover. Okay. And that day, I made the decision I wanted to be a basketball player. So then... Um, I committed the next 10 years to basketball, was trying to go D1, got out of Canada, went to prep school, and it started in Wichita, Kansas. I used to play at a YMCA with a makeshift, but this is a crazy story, makeshift basketball team. They brought a fake team to Ottawa. Uh, they used to practice at the YMCA where I, where I would go after school. And okay. I became friends with the guy who made the fake school. A mm. fake school? What do you mean a Whoa. fake school? Like a fake prep school. It was like a fake prep school. There's a story about that recently, like a fake football team. Yeah, there's a lot of them. How, like, how does that, how does come, that, work? How does that yeah. come out? Um... And they just came, they came in from the Bahamas. Okay. And so like they came and never left. And they went to Kansas. Canada. They to were Canada. In Canada. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And they set up a fake school. A fake school. But really it was just a basketball team, but they said like, oh, we go to this school. These exactly. are the, these kids go like here. this private school. Okay. So I became friends with the, their, you know, head coach. Right. His name, I'm not going to say his name. <laughs> and then um, one day at the YMCA where they would practice, he was like, yo, I know a coach called Kyle Linstead. And he coaches at Sunrise Christian Academy in Wichita, Kansas. Okay. So he like calls him. I talk on the phone with him. He's like, hey, man, if you're good enough, you can fly out here. And uh, if you're good enough, you can come here to school next year. And I'm thinking this is all like not real. Yeah. End up flying out there. I go there. Buddy Heald went to that school. He plays okay. for the Sacramento Kings. I go there. I beat him in a shooting competition. Boom, boom, boom. And then I That's ended up good. not miss. It was God, bro. I didn't miss a shot the whole like tryout. Really? Literally the first shot went off Buddy's finger and still went in. Didn't miss a shot. I end up going there the next year. Then I go to junior college for one year in Casper, Wyoming at Casper College. Then I get the Division One scholarship to the University of Montana. Yeah. Once I get to the University of Montana, the coach, Travis, De- uh, not Travis DeCure, Coach Tinkle ends up going to Oregon State and Travis DeCure comes in from Cal. Okay. We didn't mesh. I got hurt. Didn't get any playing time. End of the year, he tells me to transfer. Then I get a call from Wichita, Kansas, back where I was at prep school. Right. Coach Potter, who's an advocate for mental health, shout out to that. He just called me the other day. Called me. He's like, Danny, you can come here and you have a full scholarship. Because before I left, I went to there to try out, which was a D2. Yeah. But I told myself, if I don't kill these D2 guys, I'm going D2. Yeah. I ended up killing them. Mm-hmm. Right. Two years later down the road, I ended up going back there. And that's where I started writing poetry. Okay. okay. How, do you, it's a long story. how do you get offers from training with a fake team or like a I didn't I wasn't on the fake team I, I went to a normal high school in Canada okay yeah but you became friends with them and started with, hanging out with them exactly okay. we played them someone filmed right. it on an iPad it was like it's, it's a really long oh, intricate okay. ass story wow okay yeah. and are they all like the actual age that they're supposed to be I mean if you're creating a bullshit team you can right I think you so I mean I was, shit, I was 17 they looked about me, my yeah. age I still talk to some of them you know what's hmm. the benefit of making a fake team anyway like what do you man opportunity you know there's people all around the world who aren't afforded the same opportunities we have like in the Bahamas Sri Lanka India the list goes on wow. so for the some of these people it's a lifeline hmm. and i can come also, here and play basketball boom also but if you're a coach you get like booster money so True. like so like so if you're like Rimkiss, for example like if redmond was like a successful football program that would he would have gotten booster money like mm. Bell, bellevue high school gets booster money so like if you like as a high school coach you know you're teaching whatever then you're also going to make money off boosters all right okay mm. uh how long did you do d2 for into uh, well, uh, basketball to poetry how did that happen so once i got to newman university which is where i graduated yeah, from, yeah. i got a job as an overnight janitor needed money did that and then i was working in day matthias hall which is the arts department 
on the Newman University campus. Right. So I was cleaning up after everything. Then one day on the way to play Arkansas Fort Smith on the bus, I was listening to a song by They on SoundCloud. I don't even. It was because I actually met this this dude at a, a fish place. What? Random okay. shit. I met him at a fish place, and I told him like, "Bro, it's crazy. Y'all song inspired me to write my first poem." Anyways, he's like, dun, 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 dun. Well, something like that. So I hear that song, and I'm like, "Let me try to write something." Yeah. I end up writing about like hoes, bitches, and all this shit like that. And I'm like, "Nah, this isn't me." So I'm like, "Yo, let me try to start, uh, let me try to write a spoken word poem." At that time, I thought I had coined the phrase. I Googled it, realized it had been existing. Yeah. So I write this poem. Shit was crazy. Mm. I get off the bus. I show it to my teammate. He's like, bro, you wrote that? I'm like, yeah, bro. I just wrote it right now. He's like, yo, that's fucking crazy, bro. Can you remember that? Do you remember it? Yeah, I remember something that goes like this. It's like, uh, God, it's in my phone. But People ask me this all the time, and I try to get it. Uh, it's so easy to see what's different when we're living in a world predicated off creating your own image. You see, being the same is lame, and what's insane is that all fads die because acting like someone else is eventually labeled plain. They lied. There's nothing wrong with being basic. And what your heart draws you to, and if what your heart draws you to is considered tasteless, my friend, please remain nameless. The real truth is, who we are, we must face it. Because trying to be something else takes way too much energy and there's no way our soul can sustain it. The task is shameless. And if the only reason is to become famous, we'll lose ourselves and join those who became brainless. The real... That's part where I always end up messing up. And those who became brainless. Yeah, it's in my phone. But yeah. That's crazy. Like okay. Five years ago. Okay. So I was like, I wrote yeah, that yeah. first poem and I was like, yo, for I think where I'm starting at, I think I could be like great. Yeah, you could become. And that yeah. sounds good without a beat. You yeah. know, that sounds like because perfect. to me, like that sounds like a rap. Yeah. Like, like that sounds like rap. Yeah, so like, but it's poetry. It's, it's so cool. how would you take that and then go from all the way to like, how many subscribers do you have on YouTube? You have like uh, almost, almost four now. Yeah. You almost have like four million. Subscribers. How'd you get from that to there? Like you're on the bus, to like the game, you're, you're writing that out. So I write that poem on the, uh, on the bus. As soon as I wrote that poem, I said, this is what I'm supposed to be doing with my life. Because basketball, I put so much energy into getting better, mm -hmm. you know, but I was immediately good with the words. Yeah. And I'd always like freestyled like, like back in the day, like randomly, yeah. you know, and whatever that shit was. So I'm like, damn. So if I'm starting here, I think I can be one of the best of all time. So I continue to write poetry and I just started writing poetry forever. Then I started making little motivational videos and then I just started like finding like different little trends I would find online. And then mm. I would use my words to craft something towards that trend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like those would, you know. What do you call that? It's not a parody, but it's like a, uh, like a, like you did the Joker. That was a hu huge. Yeah, video. that one ain't no parody though. That shit's some crazy shit. Yeah. But, um, the par like the shit I used to do back then, I did like a McDonald's rap. Yeah. One time I did a uh, Catch Me Outside. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah, a yeah, huge yeah. video. That shit blew up. I did yeah. uh, Hilly Hilly Clinton. Okay. <laughs> but like, like the thought behind that shit is crazy. It was like at that time, everyone was telling me I look like designer. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. But that was okay. also when Hillary Clinton was going up against Donald Trump. Right. So I took the whole election and created like a Republican Democrat. You know, Hillary, Hillary, Hillary Clinton. Yeah. Mr. Trump and now we tripping. You know what <laughs> I mean? So it was like it was thought out though. You went yeah. off. You wait. You went off Timmy Turner. You went yeah. Timmy Turner beat. And Bro, then made it. So I used to take these election. mental health walks, right? Okay. What's a mental to health the mall? Walk? Okay. I st like now I take mental health drives, where you just sort of like drive or walk. I used to walk to the mall. And I would just think. Yeah. And I back fuck, I fuck with that actually because that's a that, that's a real thing. Yeah. Like yeah, right. I don't know what it is driving past eight p.m. Yeah. I don't know. It's I I feel I feel my mind getting better. I feel everything good. Yeah. There's something with it. And like at that time, I was I used to make these poetry videos on break, uh, at work behind this little thing. So every day of my life, I was literally thinking, okay, what can I do to yeah. make something viral? But within the realm that's aligned with my morals, okay, you know, because like, what did you not want to go viral for? Like talking about like pussy and like, yeah, I, I mean, I, I could never around. even make that type of shit if I wanted to. Like, it's mm -hmm. not even in my. It doesn't fit. Yeah, it, it doesn't even like come out. You know, I always say people people perform to their capabilities. Yeah, if someone's not doing what I'm doing, it's because they can't. Right. You know, so I was just trying to make shit within my moral compass. So I'm walking to the mall and I'm just like, man, what can I do? I need something crazy. So I just start going like, hilly, 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 Clinton. I'm still jumping, now we tripping. Thank God I got a passport. A couple months, I'm going missing. And then I went to the little picture, yeah. performed that, and the shit started going crazy. And then I started getting everyone to send it to like World Star Designer right. and someone else. 
And then like on the third day of everyone doing that, all those platforms posted it. Designer posted it, Worldstar posted it, and Funny Blacks. Okay. And then that's when I was like, I you know what? I need to make my first music video. Yeah. So I skipped practice because I was still playing college basketball at the time, mm-hmm. leading the league and scoring. Uh, okay, yes, and sir. I did, I did mm-hmm. that, right? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. And then I made my first music video. Okay. And then that's how like I got my first round of subscribers. Oh, so that's like the first like video that kind of took off. Yeah, that was my first mill. But was your first mill. Yeah. Damn. You said you were a janitor before? Yeah, overnight janitor. Dude, was uh was is that Goodwill Hunting? Talk to yeah, you. Yeah, uh, good, Goodwill Hunting. Like, he uh, was a janitor. But it was he was janitor, but it's like yeah. it's kind of the same thing I was getting from that story, right? Cuz you were mm. a janitor, but like you're still like, <laughs> but you know, you get what I'm saying, yeah. but like, you still like, have I, gotta a, wa- I gotta watch the movie. No, in Goodwill really Hunting, he, he, he finds a math question and solves and proves he's like a genius. Wait, but you have wait, a really wait, hidden wait. talent. Wait, you haven't just... seen Goodwill Hunting? I might have when I was super young, uh, but I, I can't remember. Goodwill Hunting, Good Will Hunting is arguably one of the best movies of all time. Well, let me write that down. No, I'm like, and actually, you especially, you would really, you would really like this movie. Yeah, Pretty much, he's a he's a janitor at MIT, wow. and there's this math equation that no one can solve. All these all these college students, oh, like Excalibur, and, some shit, and yeah, then he yeah, yeah. solves it. But he doesn't have the he doesn't want to be what he can be mm. because he's so smart. He's the smartest, but he doesn't want to be that. He wants to work construction and you know be a janitor. Is it Adam Sandler? No, no, it's uh, no, Matt Damon. It's, no, Matt it's Damon Matt, and Matt Robin Damon. Williams. Yeah, Robin oh wow! Williams. Yeah, it's it, is a, it is a it is an incredible movie. Well, I gotta but watch that. he doesn't. Uh, his his friends are not as smart as him, mm. and they're trying to tell him like, "Yo, go, go do this. Go, go." Like he can. He's literally the smartest guy ever. Wow! Like in this movie, and um, he doesn't want to do it because he's mm. he wants to be like his hometown, like his hometown homebody guy. Wow. Yeah. It's a great fucking movie, but yeah, yeah I made the comparison because yeah. they have hidden talents, but they had the same. No, job no, no, no. Being yeah, wow. I get what you mean. So, okay, so that video goes viral, and you just keep going. And then yeah, but so like that video went viral. But what I was really doing during that time, because I wanted to be, I wanted to be a, a poet. Yeah, my goal was to be the Drake of poetry. That was my goal. So I was making poetry music videos, one take spoken word poems. How would those? And do? I didn't want to do music. Uh, I had a couple of those go like mini viral. Okay, like I have one about a banana that yeah. like people love. I compare life to a banana. I used to compare life to everything, like ramen noodles, mm-hmm. uh, just everything. Yeah. You know? How is life like a banana? Okay, so I go into the cafeteria one day, and there's a banana there. I got to slow down, make sure I can say it right. I look at the banana. It's brown. And in my head, I'm just like, yo, how much you want to bet this fucking banana is like perfect on the inside? But the average person walking by the banana would never choose it because they see the brown on it. Yeah. So I'm just telling my teammates, you know, we just got done. I'm like, yo, I bet you this banana right here is beautiful on the inside because most bananas are best when they're a little bit brown. Okay. And it was like, yeah, I know. There's no way that shit looks rotten, bro. That shit's rotten. So then, like, I get everyone around. I'm like, watch this. And I just peel it slow. And I'm like, you see, sometimes in life, people pass up on you because of your outward appearance. And then I took that and made a poem later after oh, work because okay. I worked yeah. overnight. That makes perfect sense. I would yeah, never yeah, have guessed I, that, I but that does totally work. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Honestly, and you're and you're right too because yeah. sometimes bananas be looking musty as fuck on the outside. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm like, yeah, I don't fuck with that banana. But then it looks good on the inside. You're like, yo, exactly. I really do need a banana right now. And you, you open it up, and you're like, yo, that was a fuck. exactly. So I was I would make videos like those, but I've done that all my life. Just like try to make analogy out of things. Yeah, you know. So would. Just talking. Would you consider yourself like spiritual, or are you like, are you just more, are you just more like woke than? Uh, than I consider myself spiritual. I mean, I, I can, I even consider the law of attraction a form of prayer. Is that is that you your know? is that like what you follow? The law of attraction. No, I mean, I, I mean, the law of attraction isn't even like the law of attraction is really just common sense. It's like this, right? It's like yo, if I consistently think about eating and being hungry i'm gonna go find something to eat true but you could also argue that like the law of attraction doesn't apply to people that aren't motivated so it does though because here's the thing about the most this is the most dangerous part of the law of attraction that most people miss when they find it is that it works both positively and negatively okay so even if you're thinking negative things like you might not be motivated but you might be constantly thinking about staying unmotivated so you'll never even attract motivation what do you have to be thinking about then motivation or just success um 
you really just got to pay attention to your thoughts because whether you're th- whether you know you're thinking or you're not you're manifesting something in this life right whether you know it or not because we're always thinking so the law of attraction is just becoming aware of what your thoughts are the first thing you become aware of is that most of your thoughts as the average human being are negative right you know like most of us are constantly talking down in ourselves which is why i start my day with my affirmation it's your boy dax we back at it like a bad habit if you want something you better go grab it and today we're going to make a big play so I start my day off with positive shit. So I'm constantly attracting big plays, you know? Mm. But I've noticed, like, back in the day, I used to, like, not even think like that. I'd be thinking negative. Yeah. And, but then nothing would happen. But now you're attracting these good things. You're making yeah. it happen because you're always thinking about it. Uh, Just think positive. Yeah. So, I mean, it's so, hard. So, I mean, that's that's a lot to think about. I'm saying, and, like, I agree. I agree. I, mean, I, fu- I fuck it up. No, 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 I agree with you. I'm just saying... <laughs> Like say you're some somebody who doesn't think highly upon themselves, mm-hmm. and I mean I'm like instantly comparing it to like someone who just kind of like sits in the room all day and doesn't really go do anything for themselves or for anyone else. Yeah. How does that person manifest anything for themselves to then be to then go do something great? I mean, listen. Some people don't. Some people spend their whole lives in mediocrity. You know, we all we all have a life, but it's a blip of existence compared to what. You know, this whole span is, you know, like I watched a fucking Leonardo uh, da Vinci uh, documentary four days ago called The Lost Leonardo. And even then, I'm still it's hard for me to fathom that there were people living 500 years ago. Yes. Mm. Like most people don't even like grasp that, you know, it's a hard concept. to understand. It's a hard concept people around hundreds of years ago. Exactly. Doing their own. And we lives. have proof of it. So yeah. it's like but I, we only remember guys, people like Leonardo da Vinci. So most of us are just living like blips of existence that no one's ever going to care about so yeah. a lot of people end up just living in mediocrity yeah, that's, you yeah. know you live with that but some, some mediocrity is not a bad thing it, yeah, so if, you're, with if you're happy you're happy you're happy which is the goal yeah you but know? we remember the what we remember deem, the heroes what would deem you to be like not like the people that are remembered long time like who do you think right now would be remembered from from like what's going on today five, in our five hundred years or whenever whenever say like would Drake would be remembered in five hundred years from the now? Kanye is he or... on par with like the Leonardo da Vinci? That that's a hard thing to say. Yeah, that's not a question. That's a question you got to ask him. You know, I'm not going to answer that for him. You know. Well, no, I'm just Your saying like every, I'm saying everyone in general. Like, who do you think is out there that ha- has an man, impact? I'm, like, listen, that? I'm the type of person, man. I'm, I would not, I'm like I'm only going to speak on myself with type of shit like that. So. You know? Okay, so okay, so we'll go. I think I'm gonna be remembered. We'll go that five. The question. Yeah, that's, that's a good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a great way to look at life. We'll go. We'll go 500 years from now. Your ancestors, your great, 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 greats, and we'll go. Who's like who is in the history books? Who's who's someone who really made a huge impression? Mm, yeah, I think. Yeah, I like I like thinking about it outside of music. Um, yeah, not, uh, not even music. Bill Gates. Say. Bill Gates. Yeah, you know Elon. Uh, people like Elon Musk. Elon you know Musk. Uh, the guy who made Apple. Tim Cook, not Tim Cook, uh, Steve, Jobs. Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs, yeah, these are people who have cr- you know created culture. I mean, I, in my opinion, I think Kanye is going to be there. You think? Just because of what he's added to the culture in go. terms of like creations of things. I mean, I remember when he first came out with the clothes, like looking like a bum, and people were like, yo, how's everybody? You're paying so much money just to look like a bum. Look at all the rips in the clothes. Yeah. And now that's everywhere. Yeah. He might not have been the first to do it, but he created the steam and around it to popularize. Yeah. So my you know? my thing with Kanye being remembered is I think it's one of those things where you had to be there. I don't yeah. think that I, I I think you had to be there and watch it live. I don't I don't think Kanye will be at a point to where I think when everyone who's seen Kanye is then dead. Mm. I, I don't think it's one of those things where people are going to kill still talk about it. My mm. personal opinion on Kanye in is what like, realm though? Because I what I just mentioned. Was like fashion. No, yeah, no. Yeah. I'm just kind of saying. I so it's so his music will be around. Everything will be around. But like every part of Kanye when he's been popping, I've listened to. Uh, our age has listened to. You know, every every age has listened to. I think once we step out of that, Kanye is not done. But I think that he won't be remembered, in the sense of like <laughs> what everyone has experienced him as. Okay. Like I, I think you ran for president. I, I think like my opinion on Kanye West is like a lot of people that. Or like the biggest Kanye West fans would think he's crazy, but like, like, like you said earlier in the beginning of the podcast, like he's rich for that reason. Like he thinks outside of the box where like nobody that that's as rich as him thinks. So like he would seem crazy to the normal human that's mediocre or yeah. like you know, because like most of the stuff that Kanye used to say, I think is crazy because like I don't think like he does. I don't think like a billionaire. But when you th- have all the money you have in the world and you own everything you can, you think out of the box and people think mm. it's crazy. Yeah. 
I, I just I, Elon's I, different. People like that are different because you they're impacting everybody's lives every day. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that guy's a god. I just think I just think so. Like for instance, with Elon Musk, if if Elon Musk gets to Mars in the next twenty five years, right? Like gets or gets people somewhere to where we've never been before. That's something that goes in. You know, that's a stamp. That's like all right, we're in the history books. Kanye, for instance, is like you know he's he's uh, I I love Kanye West. I've lo- I love all of his music. I think he's awesome, but. I just don't know how long lasting his mm. like okay. he is. Yeah, right, rightfully so. I mean, like I feel like this is gonna be eventually like there's gonna be a time people don't remember Michael Jackson or certain people that I think are even bigger than Kanye West. Like, but the time, even Michael, like Michael Jackson yeah. was a superstar. Oh, the was Beatles so, though. All right, the Beatles is someone that I think are bigger than all of them. Yeah, the Beatles are the biggest. Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson is huge, man. He's about yeah, that's true. Yeah. Dude, bro, he would do a hundred thousand people's shows. Yeah, that's true. Everyone in the world knows Michael but Jackson. But like, eventually, I feel like people would forget. Yeah, but that's why you know. But like, I just don't think Kanye. Along that with scope. time comes people, and people hand down knowledge to other people. So yeah. you want to hear yeah. something crazy? Yeah. Um, you know, in the last years of Leonardo da Vinci being alive, his biggest concern was like, will he be remembered? Yeah. Really? Yeah. He was like that's concerned, like if his work would be like. He, you know? Did he openly like talk about that or write about it? I mean, this is via the fucking the the documentary. documentary I yeah, yeah. But okay. I just thought that was fascinating. That's crazy. He's invented so many things that that are now like huge parts of our lives. Like or inventing the first helicopter, right? That's what he did. He invented like the did, rotating propeller. Did he? I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. I'm talking about the painter dude. <laughs> his shit, his shit, pretty much would go up and down. So it was like a yeah, like it was, yeah. Like, it you know, he's a painter, but he also wow. created some of the I didn't the know. Wow, look at that. He did the uh, that. He created the first design of a plane. He wrote out the entire human body in terms of like what I wow. think. I think that's the most interesting one. I think it is yeah. because he mapped out exactly how a human is made. Like the a, weirdest thing about the human body yeah. is like everything that humans know is the human body, right? Like, like we kind of understand how it works. Every almost everything in society is based off of the human body, which is really weird mm. to think about. But like, there's it. It's it's really interesting. But if you think about it, there's. Like buildings, cars, whatever. Yep. Everything low key stuff yeah. from a human. Cars, that's, that's what, but that's what I'm saying. The, mo- the most, like the best inventions were all made without the technology that we have now. Kinda. Like what? Like this? Like what? What's one that isn't? They weren't. It, it's not that it was made. It's that it was thought of. Thought but, of. But but now but now they're being put into. We wouldn't be able to do shit without the technology we have now. And the great thing about I don't technology- know about that. You wouldn't be able to do what? It's all bit. It's, okay, I mean, so, okay. So if you, date I mean, back live to, life at a standard, maybe. True. So, but if you date back to like ancient Mesopotamia, right, mm-hmm. where like all like the first shit was built, apparently, right, like the wheel was invented, right. So you have the wheel, but tell me that you don't have like you could never. So I I do agree where the wheel is one of the best inventions ever. Think about all the shit that's come from it. Mm. Something rotating around something else. It there's a lot of stuff that applies to that, but. That just feeds into so many other things. So then technology builds more technology. Facts. I guess I'm talking like so like I, light bulb creation, like electricity, like yeah. things like that. So I agree with you in that sense. But so the light bulb being invented then allows for circuit boards. It allows for everything mm. else. It allows for research on so many other other fronts. Facts. To where, so you need technology to then build other technology. That's kind of the whole Correct. point. Mm. Mm. I hear what you mean. By the way, I didn't know that he invented the scissors. So that's kind of wow. cool. Wow. And also floating bridges. There's weird shit like that, Bro. but, but also did the Mona Lisa, which is epic. Did he yeah, did he invent it or was it like a concept? It was a concept, and he actually made it usable. That's yeah, fucking sick. It's sick. Uh, let's bring to something else. This is a huge topic that we got asked about. Uh, what led to the whole thing with KSI? Because we had a last guest on. Mm-hmm. He was beefing with KSI a ton. They were gonna box each other. <laughs> okay. Alex Wasabi. Um, but now you you were in it too. What went down like with you and KSI? Uh, I saw a video. Of uh, I think it was I saw like a video of him talking about like my work I think mm-hmm. that's how it started. What what did he say? I don't know, bro. It was like three years ago, something like something about he was on a podcast. Huh? I don't remember the words. He was on a podcast, but I don't remember like what was said because it was like over three years ago. Yeah, and you then know, did so you like, like respond? And, I mean, that stuff. St- that was crazy. when I made the kill shot. Uh, right, the kill shot song. Dude, Berkeley loves that song. Like oh, when, yeah. when you came song. out with that, it Legendary was like song. senior year of high school, and then Miss Rice class would pl- like he'd play it. That's crazy. Every fucking day. Yeah, it's like those weird little things that you get into online with like the beef. It makes mm. memorable moments for a ton of people. That's how they know you like initially too. Mm. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, that's really. how powerful YouTube is. Like, like, like 
you say you're not a YouTuber, but like a lot of people would like. Yeah, I, I say I'm not a YouTuber, but I love YouTube. Yeah, yeah. You know, obviously I have almost four million subscribers. It's like, but I just like so, it, like sometimes it. I don't say it pisses me off because people are gonna label you regardless. Yeah. But all I have is like this, right? Let's say you're you play basketball, mm. and people are just like, "Yo, you're a soccer player," and you're like, oh. "No, nah, I'm a basketball player." Yeah, <laughs> you know, you're just like. It's it's a really tainted uh, category. Yeah, but I think but I think YouTube is great. I'm proud to be on YouTube. I love YouTube. I've talked and connected with a lot of YouTube people. But it doesn't make you a YouTuber. Yeah, because I've just never done YouTube. Yeah. Then how's if it I like, had done YouTube, I'd yeah. say I'd love to see how you know shit. But that's not your stuff. Then how is it like then uh, also getting to know people in, in the in the music music industry too? Like you've had some crazy features. Too. Like what what, is, what oh, are some yeah. of the craziest features you've had? Um. On my songs? Yeah, on your songs. Uh, you know, I have Tech Nine, Legend. That's fucking um, sick. Yeah, Trippy Red. Hobson, right? Trippy Red. Uh, Yellow Wolf, I just had on the album. Snow the Product. Um, Tom McDonald. Um, so, anyway. so do you have to pay for features or does it just. Work? Nah, I don't know. Not, no. Not not those guys? No. They're just like friends and they. And they it's just like, you? like, it's just people. Like, I went on tour with Tech Nine. You know, oh, Tom. Tom, I was, my first ever tour was with Tech Nine. That is fucking sick. Yeah. So, so did he discover you, and he's like, "Yo, this guy's fucking sick." Uh, it was through Travis, who owns is part owner owner with him with Strange Music. I'm speaking slow because I don't want to say something that's not right. Oh yeah. Okay. So I'm no, thinking on it. Um, yeah. So I met Travis. Travis said, come on the tour, hit up Tech Nine. He was like, hell yeah, let's do it. Boom, went on the tour. It was 55 shows. It was amazing. 55 shows. How many yeah. people were you playing for? Like at, at these um, I mean, shit, they be, they be killing it. So sometimes, you know, it could be thousands, could be hundreds. It depends on what venue. and Yeah, any yeah, crazy so. stories from 55 days? On yeah, man, back, that was back when your boy was a wild boy. Wait, what do you mean? What were you doing differently? Because you you, <laughs> you're telling us you don't smoke at all. You don't do any of that stuff. Yeah. What were you doing? Man, I was just I was I was being a man. You know, yeah. I was I was I was being a young man, you know, doing my thing. Being a rock star. You know what I mean? Yeah, quote unquote rock star. I was just I was I was you know, I'm not gonna say getting it in, but I was just but like I said, I've always been a <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, I've always just been like a subdued guy. I'm not about to go crazy. Yeah. You know, but I learned very quick that I couldn't do that lifestyle for years. Really? Yeah. What was the what was the thing that you were doing? Like, I cannot keep doing this. Th that this one thing. I can't keep you know, it's really just a woman thing. I think at the end of the day, between <laughs> with, 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 like at the end of the day, yo, a lot of men, a lot of our success and a lot of what we end up doing in life is like can be attached to like your lust to chase women. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You know, okay. so I just got a little bit more discipline, and, you know, it happened quick. You strike me as super calculated. Like, I, like every, like ever since I've met you, you strike me as like everything you're kind of doing is like very, you're calculating it. To a certain extent, I mean, th yeah, things, more. not not the music per se, the music just comes naturally, but in terms of like, you know, what I'm saying right now, yeah. I'm definitely thinking about I'm it. I'm just striking sure. as like the way like, like you, you carry yourself in a way like, oh, I'm thinking about how this could affect me. Oh, for sure. Or, I'm not, or, or even your actions. Yeah, no, for sure. I'm not about to just do, you know, but for me, it's really like this. Like, I think what separates like me a lot of the times is like, I'm building what I'm doing and it's not connected to negativity. You know, like I'm growing as an artist based off of the talent and the skill and the stuff I'm making. I don't want no extra baggage of like this negative this, this negative that. You know, that's why I, I haven't really even been on shit or anywhere for the past like three years. You know, and people still ask me questions about shit that was like three years ago when that was when I started making music. Yeah. yeah. You know, because the first two years were poetry. Okay. You know, so they're asking me about stuff when like, I literally just began this. You know what I mean? So it's like I'm just, I'm so then careful would, about it. What would you like for people to ask you about? Because like, so for yeah. us, for instance, like, so if we go, we're all right. Dax come on the podcast. We're gonna look up his shit. But if it's from three years ago, then what? Then what do you like? You know, do you I understand mean, what I'm saying? Yeah, I like, mean, like I, I think about it like this. It's like you know, like should I put out songs like Dear God? You know, Joker, Book of Revelation. These are some of the most successful independent songs of all time. Like. You know, you're talking about like songs that have no radio play, no playlists, no nothing, and have 40 million views, 50 million streams, and, j and went, just went gold. Mm -hmm. I just don't post it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's what like. What do you mean you don't post it? 
like you know i got songs that are like you know i got she cheated again dear god these songs are like going gold but i just haven't are, posted it yet, you know? like, fit, like yeah like, crazy numbers yeah, you know but, what i mean yeah. but it's like like a lot of people don't understand because like i said i drive all the the narrative right because i'm the only one advertising my shit yeah so like a lot of people don't understand what i'm currently doing because they're used to what they see and most people they compare me to are signed and they don't understand that i'm independent yeah so it's like it's insane yeah you know what i mean <laughs> but nuts. i'm just not like advertising it but if you like that. if you wanted to and like you went through the route of getting signed and everything and with the numbers that you have you could take those and get all those radio plays and the radio sales and stuff like that yeah my thing is just like you know you know i got i'm not saying it's ego but like my belief in myself like i don't i don't think there's anything wrong with getting signed and i probably eventually one day will get yeah. signed because i believe anybody else who has the talent i have and would be in my situation would do that mm -hmm. you know what i mean but i just don't want anyone to have an excuse when they look at my shit, as to say, this is why this guy's successful. Because he's with a massive label. Because he had this push, he had this cosign, he had this, that, 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 that. When people look at Dax, there's no excuses. So when you do things like that, once people start talking negative on me, they end up discrediting themselves. Right. And that's why I've continued to grow, because any negative talk that comes my way, I always outweigh it with the consistency and the skill level of what I do. So now that I've built what I've built independently if I do decide to go and work with a label, people will see the trajectory story and everything will then make sense. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of how it is now, like, is you're starting off independently, but, like, um, shit, like... Ch fuck. Chance for rapper's still independent. And yeah, like, yeah. what's the income, like, like, what's the income difference between, like, being independent and being Because when you're signed, you make your money when you first, when you sign the bonus, right? Yeah, like, have anybody ever come up with you with with a deal or anything and you've oh yeah i've been to a bunch of labels i've been i mean back like back in the day when like i first started blowing up with like she cheated again and those type of songs and kill shot yeah. i'd visited all the labels you know? what were they offering you know it's crazy a lot of people like once people get in a room with me they understand that i'm not the typical person yeah, like you're yeah. not just about to put no bullshit in front of me because like you know i'm an educated motherfucker yeah you know what i mean so it was really people just asking me what i wanted to do that's a good right and that was when i had less leverage yeah for sure you know so now it's really if that were to happen it would be like a partnership thing because you're not about to trick me out of my position mm -hmm. you know you can't take what i've already done because i did that yeah but you also can't give me anything that's not three or four times what i currently generate yeah so it's like you're, like you're not just talking to like someone who's hungry and like you know like yeah yeah, yeah. who's mo i'm not even money driven i don't care i don't even you know like i'm fucking we're vans, bro, yeah. and white beaters, you know? Yeah. So it's like, it's just a different conversation. But there was, isn't, it wasn't, because we have friends who got, um, who signed with a label and they get, you have to do this, this many albums, right? Yeah. But they receive a crazy amount of money and they're, yeah. they're big for blowing up on TikTok with their songs. Yeah. And they'll get offered like $1.5, $2 million. And it's, it's insane. But, I mean, but that, that's, that's, that's yeah. not a lot of money. That's not? not? Yeah. When you you got to think about you got to think about taxes you got to think about how oh, yeah, long like how many so, yeah. deals well because yeah. because Swaco explained it he he was pretty much telling us you know what like how all this breaks down and he was pretty much saying he got fucked on what he did that's what he said. Yeah, uh, well, well, because go, so managers are automatically taking twenty to thirty percent. So there you go. There goes half. There goes there goes a third. If, if you, you have one, or like you know, if you can negotiate that. You're a human being. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You don't have to give somebody twenty. You don't got to do give anybody anything. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. so like so for him, for example, there goes thirty percent, mm -hmm. right? And then you're also paying thirty. Wow, 20 percent in taxes, right? So then, so then, he, pretty much what he was saying was the money that you thought you had. You don't have, yeah. and then you're in this bad spot of where you have to make all of that money back. Yeah. For the I mean, if you're giving thirty percent to your manager, you're fucked. Yeah, yeah, that's, you know, because that's you high. give thirty percent to them, then you also got to give a percentage to the label. Now you got to think about how much money you're making on the dollar. That's with interest if this is like you know a major label, and then you got taxes, mm -hmm. and then you got life you got to live, and then you also got these songs and shit you got to make. Yeah. And if the label's paying for them, that's just more money that's added onto your shit. So it's like. But I know that the point of the cash up front is to make sure that you don't have to do like have a regular job to to create those albums, make their money back. What's the major revenue source then when you're unsigned? Like, does it come from monetization? My music. My music. Through through what? Through monetization? Because you're not. It's not you're radio sales, right? Spotify and Apple. Yeah, it's just like YouTube, Spotify. Like, this is one thing. Though. I'm a different case because I make songs like Dear God. Right. So it's like, and you know, like these songs are like streaming and doing things like crazy without any of that mm -hmm. so it's like i don't know what someone like i wouldn't i wouldn't call my shit normal 
So like if someone is not making impactful songs that are shareable, mm-hmm. I don't know what you're gonna it's do. More monetizable because yeah. you don't talk about Cody and fucking exactly when you when someone yeah, watches yeah. Dear God they share it. Yeah, right. You know, so my shit's constantly being shared and you have like, the numbers so i'm saying yeah. you're unique because you're unsigned but you also have the numbers similar to those who are signed by major labels yeah but how much does the revenue source change then is it more based on like monetization on youtube and spotify streams yeah spotify just whatever streaming platforms there are okay yeah that's solid so you like you said earlier when you were getting uh offers you had no leverage do you think like obviously i had leverage at that time but you had which not as much as i do now yeah obviously like making it big on your own now yeah. with future partnerships it's mainly going to be like you're the head of the missile and you're taking control of any project or not that i'm not that i'm taking control i want to work with people who have been successful so they can help me take my shit to the next level if i choose to sign mm-hmm. but like you know, just I'm talking about like the actual like contract they give you. Like it's not going to be something that's completely out of my favor. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because you actually have options now. You don't, have, I don't to, have to. Yeah. Do you don't it. have to do it. And also if you have other people competing for you, you know, it's like put them against each other. And like I'm getting mm. offered this from somebody else. I can do something better here. Yeah. But like for yeah. me, like I said, for me, it's not even really, it's not about even offers. For me, it's just more about like the music. Like, you know, I believe like certain songs should be heard by the world. So that's really all I want. Yeah, you know, I get what you mean. Okay, so what's the next big uh, project that you have coming up? Like, what do you really focus on for the next several months? Um, shit, really just dropping the music videos for the f- my first album I just dropped. What's it called? Uh, it's called Pain. Okay. Paints, Paints, paintings. Pain paints paintings. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. P. Yeah, man. You gotta listen to it when you get time. That's the big one. We'll link it down below as well. Hell yeah. yeah. Pain, pain paints paintings. Yeah. Sick. How's it doing? It's doing great. I mean, shit, it's, it's independent, so it's like you gotta expect what you. It man, it's, it's. I'm telling people like it's such a different ball game, bro. When mm-hmm. you don't have certain things, so I already usually know what's gonna happen. But like I said, once I start dropping the music video for each one, that's gonna change. But in terms of well, because you have such a big YouTube following, so yeah. like, so therefore it, you know, once they know that it's out, it'll go crazy. Because yeah. the friends that we have, like Swaco, even Bella Porch, you know, Bella Porch, she oh. she's like the um. Tick, she's a TikToker, but she's massive on the charts. You can't build a bitch. Yeah, but you can't build a bitch, right? That, you know what? Whoever wrote that song, it's pretty you're good. amazing. It's pretty good. If she wrote it, then I big I shout know. out to her because that I there you know I hear no songs. Way she wrote that song. I hear songs and I literally I'm, I go like, damn, I wish I would have wrote right. that one. It, yeah, it's like because it was such level. a good idea. Like you literally you can't build a bitch, man. But every, like, oh, yeah. I know, good shit, man. But then she shit. is so good at marketing it on TikTok and mm-hmm. using the sounds, and so is our friend Swaco that they always get crazy numbers on Spotify, YouTube right away from that. Mm-hmm. Swaco's you, been doing crazy shit. He bro. has like, like eleven bro. million viewed videos, crazy. No, yeah, but what do you think of uh, that process that people have been going through now, using social media and TikTok, and blows up their song bigger than like. You, you could ever expect like she got a hundred million on that music video yeah but that shit signed though true i heard they spent like a hundred k on her first music video mm, like some crazy budget yeah i mean it's still it's that though it's a TikTok. great song it deserves it deserves what it got you know i think it's i think it's great if, if when good songs get the exposure they deserve mm-hmm. mm. but would you do that on tiktok like how do, would, do you i mean i put my i put my shit on tiktok i i actually i, I recently hit a million on tiktok which is lit yeah um i just be, i'd be putting like mostly behind the scenes stuff yeah, okay. That's I, honestly, I like that more personally. Like, yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not everybody, but like, I like when I like seeing like people's like real lives. Yeah, like that's why like podcasts are so cool to me is like you know, come on, like people come on, you talk to them for an hour. Yeah, like, shit. Oh, it's like really like what they're doing. Yeah. So, so who's like who's like your uh, not even like inspiration? Like who's like what artist do you think is doing shit like right or who's like your favorite right now? Um. Besides you, obviously, like obviously, yeah, I like, believe in yourself. I, because I, I knew, I like, I just, just talking to you, I knew yeah. that you. Um, who are my favorite artists right now? Honestly, you know, it's crazy. Leonardo da Vinci, um, Beethoven. I've been, I, bro, I don't know why. I'm just, I'm like, what do you like? Inspired by legendary shit. Yeah. Just the symphonies. Like, I just like, I've, I've recently made a 20 minute song, a 30 minute song, and an hour song. Okay. You know what I mean? I'm just like so against this whole new shit of how like people's attention spans are short Mm -hmm. and blah, 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 this and blah, 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 that. I just feel like everyone's being fed some bullshit and they're just, they're dumbing themselves down because they think it's popular. You know, I just released a 10 minute song that shit's got five plus million views. And a bunch of streams. Yeah. You know, I got a 20 minute <laughs> one. I got a 30 minute one. I got an hour one. Wow. So it's just like, I'm really inspired by legendary shit. So it's like, you know, I love Tupac. 
I love watching that. Um, and obviously, there's a lot of great artists doing a lot. Is of there great anyone things. who's popping like right now? Though you're like, damn, that popping right now. Yeah, you're, you're like that guy's fucking sick. I want, I want to, I want to feature. I, I want him to feature. Obviously, Eminem. You know, Eminem. I mean, Eminem's lit. Busta Rhymes is lit. I can go on. Every every person who's great at rapping, I fuck with. Can you name anybody that's rapping now that has popularity that you know you're better than? You can't <laughs> ask someone like me that type of question. You know what I mean? Why? You gotta say every, you're saying everyone, what, but what? Well, like he's 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 very confident in himself. He's he's gonna say, you know, I mean, like he's gonna say that he's like anybody in specific that when you see them, you're like, mm, how like how are they popping that crazy? Yeah, it's not doing it for me. Like, is there anyone that confuses you? Like, like how, the little pumps or something, you know? Music is so subjective, though. So nothing confuses me. True. You know, there's a pocket for everything. True. You know, there's people who have toe fetishes. Mm-hmm. And That's they're true. making they're making a bunch of money off of OnlyFans off yeah. their toes. Yeah. So nothing confuses me, because oh. everybody's looking for yeah. where to belong. We met, so we balanced met. and positive. It's just like it's just. I was like, it's making me so, it's so antsy. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I, I listen. I got nothing negative to say about no other human living, breathing person because I don't really give a fuck. Yeah. I'm just focused on what like you know. That's like if you're doing your thing, great. But you know, I'm not about to try to take money out of no one's pocket or For you know sure. what I mean. Do your thing, but like I know what I am. Yeah, you don't talk I'm shit bad. about anybody. You always keep it positive. Time you always give me like the if if you fuck with me, like I'm gonna give you what I'm I'm gonna give you good shit. I'm gonna put out good shit. Yeah, and like and like everyone's gonna be satisfied, which yeah. I think is really cool. Now now I know what's going on though. You know I see the dichotomy of everything that's going on and how people sort of treat me within the spectrum of like all of that. How do they treat you? You know. It's like, how can I put this the best, man? Like, I just think that, like, anyone with any type of common sense or, like, um, you know, like, just if you, if you have a brain, you can see what I'm doing. You know, and you understand it's special. I don't like when people go out of their way to try and tear down what I'm doing. Right. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? There's a saying like you can either tear down every building in the city or you can try to build the tallest yeah. one. You know, like just if you don't fuck with what I'm doing, that's fine. But you're not convincing nobody who has a brain that what I'm doing isn't greatness because I wouldn't have done what I've done with what I was given, which was nothing and created this in five years. If it wasn't legendary, yeah, because yeah. I haven't seen anyone else do it. That's you know what I, I mean? Haven't seen anybody else do it besides so, like KSI, maybe. But he's already that's, had that's, a that's totally different. You know what I mean? Like I, I, people like that, like like I, KSI is great. He makes great music. He's doing his thing. But me and him have different goals. Mm-hmm. And if you listen to both of our music, you can see we have different goals with what we're doing. Yeah, it's not a bad thing. It's just different people. You know? Yeah. So like me, that's why I don't even talk about her anybody because I don't even I don't want to be grouped. I just want to do what I'm doing and do it to the best of my abilities. And everyone who's doing something else, great. I support it. It's great. You killing it? Dope. Oh, yeah. But don't say negative shit about my shit because it's not ne- my shit I'm doing is great. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So that's just, I can go on and on, but then you know, I'm just going to sound bitter. But <laughs> <laughs> do, you have, do you have any like pet peeves? Like, like pet peeves, mediocrity. Um, if you listen to my song Joker, like, you know, the whole internet thing, you know, the craziest thing nowadays is that, you know, everyone is given a platform. You are, know? They, are they, though? They feel like they are, at least. Who Who's they? Every single human being on earth has a platform now. Whether some people have more people on their platform, but everyone, ha- everyone, everyone has a yeah. voice. And that's why, you know, it's crazy. I said it the other day. Social media is the modern day cigarette. There are some people that don't have a voice, though. No, they just don't create accounts if you're not on social media. Instead. Yeah, some people don't have social yeah. media. But what do you mean by it's a modern day cigarette? So when the cigarette first came out, it was amazing. Everyone was like, it was on commercials. It was everywhere. Everyone was like, yo, this is the new thing. You're smoking it in the movie theaters, everything like that. But they didn't know the after of effects of it, you know, down the road. Mm. And then eventually it got to the point where it's like, okay, no, this is canceled. We can no longer put it in commercials. It's no longer acceptable. You know, like the cigarette is like almost like taboo now. Everyone's smoking <laughs> weed. Right. And for me, social media is the same thing. But I think like 10, 20, 30, 40 years down the road, all the rays in suicide, uh, ADHD or whatever diagnosis they got out there, and violence is all going to be attributed to social media. You think? Yeah. I, I think You think so. it's, it's an effect of social media? Yeah. Because comparison is the ultimate you know, enemy of joy. 
and you compare a lot on social media. That's all people do. You also compare. find community in social media, unlike ways you can Correct. find anywhere else. But I would. I don't know if it's directly attributed to social media. Like people, people point out to like, oh, kids with de- uh, depression and anxiety rise at the same time. Like use of social media rises. That, you don't that, think that's it's connected. They are. I, I, They're very connected. But like a lot of it comes from also just like uh, like off your phone, like one parents thing. And family. One thing yeah, that's yeah. interesting. So I so I deleted TikTok a week and a half ago, Amazing. like just just because I I just wanted to see what would happen. Hmm. And my like day has gone significantly better. My days have gone sig- significantly better since deleting TikTok. Mm-hmm. And like it's, I mean, it's like as of right now, it's my career. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like it's what I it's what I do. It's a, it, it, one of our main channels on TikTok. I deleted it to see, you know. Because I was just on it, scrolling, you know, whatever. You see shit that, like, you just, like, don't necessarily need to be seeing. Mm. And so I, I do agree with you in the sense of social media is weird. It's a, it's a very weird thing. Um, I think it connects people and also tears yeah. people apart. It's a f- It makes people, yeah, it makes people, in, it makes people just as much as it tear people down. Like, I mean, like, it makes careers for us yeah. as much as probably, like, it doesn't, like, it badly affects other people. But, like... It's a 50-50 split, you know? Yeah. it's a, Like I said, it's amazing depending on how you use it. Yeah, for sure. I, I, I get what you mean. All right. Um, it's been a great episode. We've talked about a ton of stuff that's been going on. So we'll I link your album down below. Oh, you guys, yeah. go check it out. I go run it up. a more intellectual conversation. It was. We got yeah. deeper. We got, we got, we got, got more, deep. Yeah. We got, we got a, deep. My bad. <laughs> it was no, good. No, it was good. <laughs> no, it was solid. No, I it love solid. it. I, I, we've, honestly, we talked, Kyle and I talked about it. We're like, yeah, we want, we want, we want an intellectual conversation. We're, we're like... It's weird because we're so t- like toxic on YouTube, on YouTube and TikTok. Mm. Like we make fun of people or like we'll p- crack jokes. It's different to like have a guest that's like mm. super poised and has his own lane. And mm. I don't know, I got a different perspective on stuff. Mm. Yeah, y'all didn't even ask me about girls or anything. So I mean, that's how you know shit. I mean, I mean, yeah. yeah. We just we, 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 got, had, we had we had so much deeper shit to talk about, right? Yeah, it was right. epic. It was epic. That's how it be, man. Yeah, I fuck with it. Yeah, no, no, you really, I had a really, I had a really fun time. I do want to know how crazy the girls were on the Tech Nine tour, though. They're crazy, man. It's definitely. It can definitely get wild out there. You got to really control yourself. I mean, mm-hmm. My advice to every man out there is, man, is you know, who you decide to, you know, mess with is really going to decide your life at the end of the day. You just got, you, you, you just got, you just got to understand who you're fucking with. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what were like the crazy both nights, eyes like, open? What what bro- what happened on like a crazy night like on that tour? What would you expect? You're back at the hotel or something? Is a trailer? How's that uh, work? It's like just tour buses. I mean, you know how it is. It's like I mean, I played college basketball, so I was. I mean, back in the day, you know, I used to get it in. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So you just like you getting it in, you're being human. You know what I mean? That's what shit. We came in the world naked, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, Might we as well stay fucking vagina. naked. <laughs> so yeah, man, it just gets wild for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys, make sure to subscribe. Uh check out the album link down below. Uh follow us on Instagram. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks for listening, guys. Peace. Woo! Woo!